Hello, everyone. Welcome to Screen Screen. I'm Viola. In today's episode, we're going to talk about movies that are related to families that aren't perfect. I know we all have a family that's not perfect, but families in these movies have certain serious problems, and let's see how they deal with them. Both of the new movies we're going to talk about today are not from Hollywood, and the first one's from Asia. Let's listen to the introduction of it. Kotoko, the story of a single mother who suffers from double vision. Caring for her baby is a nerve-wracking task that eventually leads her to a nervous breakdown. She is suspected of being a child abuser when things get out of control and her baby is taken away. The first new movie we're going to talk about today is a Japanese movie, and actually, it's not a new movie. It's a classic re-released. It was released in 2011. It's very interesting that it was released in 2011, and it was selected at the Golden Horse Film Festival in 2018. Finally, it's going to be officially released in Taiwan. The director usually works on his own. But while he was filming this movie, he tried to cooperate with somebody else. He worked closely with Coco from Okinawa, who participated in a movie for the very first time. They not only acted together, but also put a lot of true experiences and creative scores by Coco in the movie. They even tried to apply the format of a mockumentary and improvisation in the movie, creating not only the hysteric, depressed tone, but the desperation for relief. We can see the brand new, unique storytelling style of the director. It won the best film at 2011 Venice Film Festival, Orizonte. We heard in the introduction that the mother faces a breakdown after she has to take care of her baby on her own. But actually, after her baby is taken away from her, she lives alone and she encounters an author. The author expresses his love, his passion to the mother. However, the mother rejects him again and again because. She can't distinguish whether this strong and unfamiliar love is the happiness that she looks forward to, or it's another painful hell. In 2011, when it was premiered at Venice Film Festival, it got highly recommended by the jury that year. So, if you love Japanese movie, or you want to learn about a story with a single mom that faces a breakdown, you can go watch Kodoko. Now it's time for us to move on to the second new movie we're going to talk about today. It's a Spanish movie. Let's check it out. The Beasts, with big plans to farm the land and sell vegetables at the local market for a living. Former teacher Anton and his supportive wife Olga have left their comfortable life in France behind to seek a fresh start in a remote rural part of Galicia. Instead, the dream turned sour resentment, xenophobia, and a corrosive undercurrent of unrelenting animosity awaited the grizzled French couple. Because, like it or not. When your immediate neighbors plan an all-out war, there is no turning back. And as tensions simmer and the inflamed row escalates into a full-blown vendetta, the inevitable clash between the newcomers and the locals can only end in a shocking outbreak of violence that changes everything. No, Sean, this place is my project of life, my own and my woman. Every time I get up at five. The second movie we're going to talk about today is a Spanish movie, as I mentioned. It was the biggest winner at the Goya Awards, which is the Oscars Awards in Spain. It won nine awards, including Best Film, Best Director, 
Best Original Screenplay and Best Leading Actor. The plot is based on the true story that happened in Galicia, Spain, in 2010. So it's a pretty new event. As we heard in the introduction, the couple Anton and Olga they want to seek connection with Mother Nature here in this new place. However, the local people are negotiating with the wind power company. They want to sell their land, and because Anton's intervention, other residents are hostile to him. But I can totally understand what Anton and Olga are thinking. I mean, I threw away everything I had in France to come here to enjoy maybe retirement life. I just want to grow my own plants, my vegetables, and live happily ever after here. And now you're telling me that everyone else except us is going to sell the land to wind energy company. So where's my retirement life? That's definitely reasonable for Anton and Olga to be angry. I think. However, the most scary part is that the residents start to use all kinds of methods to threaten the French couple. So there are sudden events happening every day. They are very scared. Their country life is not peaceful anymore. The director created this thriller, accumulating the violence in people's heart, until the point that we can see people are forced to extreme danger. I don't know if it's danger or not. You will see the collapse of the ideal middle class and the blurry line between victim and the person who harms people. I started to think that maybe this movie contains some murder inside. We never know, but actually, this one is just thriller, and the Japanese movie we just talked about is a horror. I'm not sure if it's just a different category the crew picked on IMDb, but this is the movie I recommend for this weekend: The Beast. Before we move on to Top Double O Seven, which troubles me very much this week, let's review what we had from last week first. Top three: The Creator. Top two was The Exorcist, Believer, and Top One: Paw Patrol, The Mighty Movie. Let's listen to Top Seven to Top Four, and you will know what I meant. Top Four. So at. You picked John Kramer. The cancer is still spreading. I'm afraid there's nothing else we can do. There is one person who might be able to help. The Bridge Curse Two. You can tell us about the rumors about the Great Wall. This building's architect and school principal have an agreement with the city of Shanghai to build the Great Wall. Wait, what? There are only two movies from top seven to top four. All right, we've encountered this kind of situation many times. But the thing is, one is so X, the other is Bridge Curse Two. What do you expect me to talk about? I already talked about so X, and that's a big challenge. If you know me, you know that I don't talk about horror. But I think since there are only two movies from top seven to top four, I don't really have a choice. So let's talk a little bit about both films. First, So X. It's the tenth movie of the series. I introduced it a bit a few weeks ago. Well, So series is just gruesome. It's not scary. It's not a horror. So if you want me to watch, I can watch it. It's just that I don't like it. All right, let's move on to The Bridge Curse Two. I save more time for this one because I haven't talked about it, so I feel that I still need to give it more time. It's I'm not sure if it's based on the true story, but when I read the plot, 
I realize that it sounds similar to my school. I mean, the ghost story happens in a university, a fake university in the story, but it sounds really like my school. It says that the architect has an argument with the school when they were building one of the buildings at school. So instead of making a building that's supposed to suppress the ghosts, it traps the ghost, and that makes the ghost not happy. And you know what I mean. All right, that's it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Let's move on to top three to top one quickly. Top、Black、three:、gold. Killers of the Flower Moon. Money flows freely here now. I do love、that. the creator. This is a fight for our very existence. Top two: Taylor Swift, The Eros Tour. We're about to go on a little adventure together, and that... the boy and the heron. <sighs> Top one: Paw Patrol, The Mighty Movie. <gasps> Did he say lunch? Uh, no. I... All right. Although it's crowded. I think it's easy to pick one movie to talk about from these five movies. I'd like to talk about Killers of the Flower Moon because I just finished reading the original book two days ago. In one day, I started reading in the morning and finished it in the afternoon. But since it was just released last week, I think it's not time for I to discuss. Spoilers right now, even though it's based on true story. So I'd like to talk about the cast. This movie presents very strong casts. Audience gets to enjoy their excellent acting skills. Leonardo DiCaprio waited for this movie for five years. Originally, the investigator from FBI was written based on him. But after the script was rewritten, he became Molly's husband. For Leonardo DiCaprio, breaking the case, detection, revealing the truth are definitely easier to control to portray. But Leonardo DiCaprio and director Martin Scorsese both think that if they do that, they will lose the main purpose to. Deeply discover something about the Osage. As for Robert De Niro, he played a millionaire who isn't the person whom he seems to be, and we get to see how he fulfills his own ambition and desire in the movie. Aside from the actors, the actress is actually excellent. Lily Greystone actually has potential to be nominated at the Oscars. She's a Native American, and if she gets nominated, she will be well. It depends on whether they sign up for leading actress or supporting actress. She will be the first Native American to be nominated as leading actress, or the second Native American to be nominated as supporting actress. And because she grew up at the reservation, she said that. The marriage between white people and Native American were very common in Montana, where she grew up, and it made it easier for her to understand the plot. But for her, instead of saying that Killers of the Flower Moon is a West movie, she thinks that it's a very heavy historical tragedy. That's very true because when I read the book. I read a lot of horrifying sentences. One of them is like this: "The evil was not an anomaly, because when the author went to learn about the case, he realized that actually there were a lot more murders that are not related to the story in the movie, which means there are actually more killers." Anyway. I'm pretty sure Killers of the Flower Moon will stay on the chart for more weeks, so we will have more chances to talk about it. And that's all the time we have for today. Hope you like the show, and I will see you next week. Bye bye.